All right, thanks, Paul. Thanks everybody for being here tonight. Um, what a resilient win by our guys. You know, you spot a team 17 points on the road. Obviously not the way we wanted to start, but sometimes things happen. Tough, tough uh, punt there in the wind. And, uh, you know, we got to respond and get off the field. We didn't do that. Credit Iowa. Uh, then we get obviously another turnover. Uh, again, credit Iowa for punching the ball out. We got to get off the field. We didn't. So we put ourselves in a hole, uh, but I thought the guys, um, we got together at the end of the first quarter to do the wave, which is one of the best traditions uh, in all of college football. Uh, they they, they kind of all looked at each other like, let's get it going. Let's go. And we got the wind, and I thought that that helped. Um, and then we made a decision there uh, at halftime to uh, have the wind for the fourth quarter. I kind of felt like it was going to go down to the wire. Uh, we went back and forth about four times on what to do. And, you know, I kind of slowed our offense down to the third quarter to get the wind. That was my decision, and uh, thank goodness the guys made me look right because, uh, you know, obviously it was, uh, you know, one of those kind of games. Um, just really proud of our guys, proud of their resiliency, proud of their response, proud of the job they've done, uh, you know, to this point. And I think it'll be even more challenging here going home on Halloween night like it is for all of us. But, you know, we've been COVID-free since we came back together, and, uh, you know, that credit goes to our guys, and it goes to their family members, and it goes to all those associated in their friend networks. So just really appreciative of the job they're doing. And now with Halloween night going home, I, I don't know about you guys, but when I was in college, Halloween was a pretty awesome night, especially after a road win. So I hope that awesome night means going home and going to bed. Um, and then, uh, you know, from there, we'll, we'll get ready. We're going to have to adjust our schedule. Um, you know, we, we will have our guys uh, that haven't voted yet vote on Tuesday. So our Tuesday will go to Monday and our Monday will go to tomorrow. So we'll get right back together tomorrow when we typically take Sundays off. Uh, and then we'll take Tuesday off uh, and then we'll be back into our normal Wednesday, Thursday schedule. So uh, really proud of the guys, really proud of their resiliency here on the road. A little surreal without any fans here in one of the cathedrals of football. Um, and I hope that I never come back to Kinnick without fans because we miss them. I, I know they're hostile and I know they don't like me and I get all that, but uh, college football and college football at Kinnick Stadium just isn't the same without these great Hawkeye fans. And, and so my hope is, is that we can all fight through this pandemic together and hopefully in 22 or whenever it is that we come back, we're all, we're all back together and you guys are just showering me with pleasantries. So, um, you know, we beat a very, I thought, resilient Hawkeye team and, uh, you know, proud of our guys' response. So with that, I'll answer any all questions. Thanks. First question for Daniel Olinger. Hi, Coach. Daniel Olinger of Inside You. Congrats on the great win. Um, Thanks, Daniel. Prior to taking over Northwestern as head coach, Northwestern was 19-45 and 45 against Iowa in the series. Since you've been a coach, you're 9-6 and six against Iowa. What does it mean to you personally that you've your teams have performed so well against what many fans consider one of Northwestern's biggest rivals? Well, again, I think the credit goes to our players and staff. You know, that's the guys in the arena that made the plays. And we adjusted some things today. And our staff did a good job. We'll look at what we didn't do well early. And, you know, we'll be very critical of ourselves as coaches first. But, you know, from my standpoint, it's just – it's my job as a leader to get our guys prepared to play each game. And uh, I'll go back to when I was a player here. You know, this this rivalry was created by us for a reason, because of respect for Iowa, their success. And, uh, you know, obviously the job that, uh, that, that they had done over a long period of time, especially against us. And, you know, Coach Barnett started that. So um, this is a rivalry from our side about great respect. And, and um, it's always close. Uh, it seems like it's always close. And, and it just that was one of those again today. Next question, Andrew Golden. Hey, Coach. Uh, my question for you guys is last season, you guys didn't do a good job of responding um, when you got down early in games. Did you notice anything different about your team's mentality when you were down today? Yeah, Andrew, like I said, when we got together at the end of the first quarter, I usually don't bring the squad up after the first quarter. And I think the guys thought I was just going to talk to them about the wave. And uh, it wasn't just that, you know, it was it was more that we're going to just settle down and settle in. Let's go. This is going to be a four quarter game. You don't lose a game after one quarter games award in the fourth quarter. And obviously uh, we needed to get another first down. We'll take a look at our four minute offense. It was not very good today. The first time that we ran it, we got to look at what we did and how we did it. Um, and then also, uh, you know, the great job that our defense did though in, in response. So um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good job responding as a team though. You, you, you go on the road, it doesn't matter if there's one fan or no fans or, or 75,000, you spot the home team 17 points and come back to win. That's, that's a heck of a response. And you hope you keep getting better. 
you hope you improve. And then when you look in the rear view mirror of the season, you hope these types of one point wins end up being, you know, reasons why you end up having a special year. I'm not ready to even come close to saying anything, but you know what I mean? I've been doing this long enough that these are the games you got to win if you want to have a special year. Next question, Greg Svernovsky. Hey, coach. Congrats on 101. Uh, I want to ask you. I think it's 395 for Hank. So let's put everything in perspective here. That might, be, that might be a good article. Ella, that's for you. All right. Great. Now, I, I want to ask you about the run uh, 143 rushing yards for the Cats to 77, and all three touchdowns coming from the run. Did you know heading in that that was going to be what it was, or did that just kind of come out of game play? Yeah, wind. You know, the wind was a factor, right? Half the game, you're going into about a 20-mile-an-hour wind that's gusting at 40, and I, you guys could probably pull the stats. You're a lot smarter than me, but I'm assuming there wasn't a, a ball thrown much further than 15 yards going into the wind by either team. I mean, it was definitely a factor. It became a huge factor early in the game. I mean, that ball was going to the boundary on, on, on Kyrick, and that thing took a snap hook, and, it, you know, it, it is what it is. He'll learn from it. That's a situation where you hot it and get away from it at the last second. He was trying to do the right thing and secure the ball so we weren't backed up. But I like the way he responded to, you know, he went right back out there. I'm like, listen, you go right back out there. You're our guy. So if, if, if Riley's out for the game, then you're, you're our guy. Let's go and credit, credit Kyrick. I'm really proud of him for the way he responded. Kind of indicative of our team. Next question for Ella Brockway. Hi coach. I'll get right on the 395 story, but <laughs> for that, um, can you take us through those last two big defensive plays, starting with the turnover on downs that you guys forced and then ending um, with Blake's kind of game ending interception? Yeah, we feel like we kind of got lucky on that second to last drive. They had a guy open um, and, and you guys probably all saw that. We got, we got a little bit lucky on that one. Um, but, I, but again, I thought our defensive guys just responded and played hard. And then, um, you know, huge play by Galley. I just was stoked to see him go down. Usually guys that are 51 to get the ball in their hands get a little excited. I know something about that. So uh, to see him to go down, you know, that's, that's a huge play. We worked the snot out of situational football, two minute, four minute. Uh, we were great in two minute uh, today defensively, not so good in four minute offensively. And like I said, we'll be critical of ourselves first and we'll take a look at that and get it fixed. Uh, next question for Peter Warren. Hey, Fitz. Uh, how's Riley doing? And also, how did his injury impact your guys' offensive plan? Hey, Peter, how you doing, buddy? Um, I, you know, plan-wise, we just plugged and played next man up mentality, right? I mean, that 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 ultimately uh, is the mindset that we have with every player. And our guys know that. We talk about it all the time, right? Uh, next guy up. So uh, plan-wise, I, I wouldn't say it impacted us that much. Obviously, a new punt returner was was pretty significant. Uh, he's hanging in there. Um, he, he got just a little freak deal on Thursday, he said, and then he said he felt fine. And then it just, it didn't, it didn't respond well today. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd probably list him as day to day right now. Uh, but, you know, that is what it is. It's tough, man. I feel my heart breaks for him because he's just an unbelievable guy named captain this week. It's just um, heart breaks for anybody that gets hurt. Next question for Drew Schott. Hey, Coach. Drew Schaff in the Daily Northwestern. Hey, um, last week up to the win against Maryland, J.R. Pace spoke about the uh, next man up mentality in the secondary, and he talked about Brandon Joseph and who led the team in tackles last week, and today he also had a big day getting leading the team with two picks. What do you have to say about um, one of your team's youngest defenders on, and his day? Yeah, yeah, I, I think we've, yeah, Drew, I think we've got pretty good depth back there right now. Again, I'm knocking on wood, kind of like the COVID stuff. I mean, the guy's done a good job. Um, you, you, you know, it, Young and talented, man. That's all I'll say. They're young and they're talented. It's tough to be young and talented in the Big Ten with the receivers, the quarterbacks, the off explosive offenses that we see. Uh, we, we've just got to – they're growing up right now in front of all of us, and I'm really proud of them. We, we expect to get Greg back pretty darn soon, uh, and, and it was good to have Cam back out there today. So feeling pretty, pretty solid about our depth there, um, but we'll, that'll be a challenge here as we move forward. Time for a few more questions. Next one for Daniel Olinger again. Hey, Coach Fitz. Um, I, you were talking there about how hard it was to throw in the wind today. On those last few drives, especially the last drive in particular for Iowa, you guys were rushing three. You only had like three rushers on the defensive line a couple of times. Was the mentality there like drop a lot of guys in a pass coverage because you knew it was just going to be hard for them to throw and your best bet was just make it put as many guys back to the cover all their options? That sounds good. I'd run with that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, we're just, 
we've got multiple coverage concepts in the two minute package. And, uh, you know, those are the ones that we decided to run today. Time for two more questions. Uh, next one, Michael Fitzpatrick. Hi, coach. Um, obviously, hey, Fitz, Jesse how, you doing, Brown, man? how you doing? <laughs> not bad. Um, obviously, Jesse Brown's been through a lot in his time with the team. So how good did it feel to see him with the number one jersey have such a good game and such a close game? He was one of the main reasons you guys won. Well, we knew it was going to be a physical game, and that's right up Jesse's alley, man. You know, I mean, he's tough, physical, uh, and uh, that's what we knew it was going to be. And he was hitting the hole. I don't know if you could see there were some creases there against the, the Hawkeyes. There's not very many, um, but there were some creases there that we tried to get to. Sometimes we were successful, and sometimes they were. So credit them. But, um, you know, I'm really proud of Jesse. You know, listen, we got a lot of guys in the backfield, and we don't have enough carries and enough touches for all of them. I mean – Drake Anderson's a great player. You know, Evan Hull's a great player. Cam Porter's a great player. You know, you saw, you, you saw a bunch of Jesse and IB today. You know, we, we, we're just, it's a long year and that group is great and they're making an impact in a lot of different ways. Um, but, um, you know, those guys just gotta be patient because they never know when their numbers are gonna be called. Uh, next question for Eli Karp. Hey coach, Eli Karp from Inside and You. Um, the turnovers, three today, three interceptions. That is something he struggled with last year. You go back to last year's Iowa game, a tight one at Nebraska, comes down to the wire. How has this team grown since last year that now it's making all the plays it couldn't last year? Yeah, well, we're two games in. So, uh, you know, obviously I don't have a full complete picture yet. But, Eli, you know, the only one I, that upsets me is, you know, just the decision that we made there, third and double, like, you know, double sticks, right? What was it, third and 14, third and 15? let's just throw the ball away, punt and live to fight another day. Right. You know, and that's, you know, Peyton comes right off to the boundary and goes, that was a terrible decision. And I went, well, at least, you know, it don't do it again. You know? So, you know, I'm usually pretty chill in those situations. You know, it's, I'm, you guys have watched me for a number of years, you know, some coaches, I, it's like, they never play the game. The guy misses a tackle and it's like, you missed a tackle. Thanks coach. I know that. You're like, why'd you throw that? Thanks coach. I know that, you know, it just, would you see what were you thinking? He goes, I shouldn't have done that. And that's, that's all I needed to hear. And, all right, well, get ready. Cause you're gonna have to go back out there. So it might be a two minute drive. So veteran guy, I think he's pretty unflappable. He, he'll probably say this wasn't his best game. And I like that. And I think he's going to do everything he can to work his tail off to improve for next week. All right, everybody. Happy Halloween. If you're here in Iowa city, travel home safe. If you're back in Evanston, stay safe as always. Happy Halloween. Go cats. Thanks.